The SpaceX, a new way to Mars. Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, SpaceX, made history in March 2017 by successfully rebooting the core stage of a rocket that flew a year ago. The concept of reusable rockets is not new, but it is the first time in space history that a commercial rocket company has attempted this feat, as evidenced by the U.S. Space Shuttle program. Commercial satellite companies have welcomed the initiative, hoping to launch satellites cheaply. As the space industry debates the viability of his SpaceX business model, governments and commercial rocket operators around the world are being forced to change their conventional thinking about rockets. United Launch Alliance, ULA, Ariane Space, Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, and Chinese rocket executives are now planning to adopt the concept to remain competitive in the price war. Managers of these programs continue to look to Elon Musk and SpaceX when making decisions. So rather than profit margins, SpaceX must recognize the disruption is leading in the global space industry. It won't work. A conventional scenario does not require a satellite launch vehicle. The core stage and associated boosters are dumped into the ocean, while the upper stage orbits the Earth. Previous attempts to salvage and reuse launchers have failed due to the lack of a better combination of technology and viable business model. The United States has developed the Space Shuttle to transport cargo and astronauts to the International Space Station, ISS. A Space Shuttle is essentially a space plane that is launched into orbit using two solid rocket boosters and an external fuel tank that feeds the shuttle's engines. The shuttle re-entered the atmosphere, landed on the runway just like an airplane, then was retrofitted and relaunched. These two solid rocket boosters, ejected after a few minutes of flight, are retrieved and overhauled for the next mission. The external tank is the primary component that fails during re-entry. The shuttle was designed to keep space access costs down by making at least 50 flights per year with an average cost per launch of $450 million. Calculations show that the average cost per shuttle launch during the operational period from 1982 to 2010 was about $1.2 billion, increasing to $1.5 billion over the life of the shuttle program. Former National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, manager Michael Griffin, agrees that U.S. manned spaceflight program has gone astray to end the Apollo program, and embark on the ISS and Space Shuttle Program 3, the U.S. has ended the Space Shuttle Program. In 2011, we expected a commercial rocket operator to offer this capability by the year 2015. However, while Orbital ATK and SpaceX are currently delivering cargo to the ISS, commercial crew program contracts awarded to Boeing and SpaceX may not materialize until 2019. This situation led to the Russian Soyuz spacecraft monopolizing crew transport to the ISS. To cement its position, Russia plans to charge the U.S. $81 million in 2018, up from just $22 million in 2008, a 370% increase in costs over the decade. He believes that SpaceX, led by Elon Musk, will not only reduce the cost of transporting crew members to ISS, but also provide low-cost transportation to Mars. SpaceX's Mars exploration goal is to make humanity a multi-planetary species. Musk believes that innovative aircraft manufacturing and management has sparked a transportation revolution, empowered businesses, and fueled new industrial ecosystems. The aviation industry is creating aircraft that can be reused many times with minimal checkout and quick refueling between flights. Like Pan Am and other commercial airlines that revolutionized transatlantic flight in the 20th century, SpaceX aims to transform the way people and cargo move between Earth and Mars. As a result, the company began developing its rockets with reusability in mind. Musk says that robust design techniques and a simplified business model will allow SpaceX to turn around his rockets and overhaul. We believe that we can reduce the cost, basically. SpaceX intends to succeed where NASA failed. SpaceX is upgrading the Dragon spacecraft. It currently uses to transport cargo to the ISS for manned missions. The company believes the commonality and reusability of the system will reduce the cost of space transportation. The company's Falcon 9 rockets use the same Merlin engines in both stages, nine in the core stage and one in the second stage, and are constructed from high-strength aluminum-lithium alloys. 
he added two core stages to the single Falcon 9 booster. The company's business principle is to employ flight-proven hardware and design commonality to reduce risk and speed the development of new rockets. They also manufacture most of their components in-house to ensure timely delivery and keep production costs low. Musk hinted that he would make the Falcon 9 fully reusable in 2009, and from 2012, he began experimenting with Grasshopper and the Falcon 9 reusable F9R with a test vehicle in 2014. He created the F9R with three engines and used steerable grid fins. These test flights demonstrated vertical takeoff, lateral maneuvering, and precise vertical landing. A key moment came in March 2017. This time, SpaceX launched a repurposed Falcon 9 core stage, sacrificing space transportation to land a cargo on the ISS in April 2016. The Societe Européenne de Satellites, SES, the owner of the repurposed rocket-launched satellite, confirmed it received a discount on launch costs, but declined to give an exact figure. SpaceX also plans to recover and reuse the Falcon 9 for upper stages, payload fairings, and Dragon spacecraft to make the system fully reusable and reduce costs. Musk believes that if he can reduce the travel time to 24 hours, he could reduce the cost of accessing space by more than 1 in 100. SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell commented in March 2017 that the refurbished Falcon 9 core stage costs less than half the cost of a new stage, $61.2 million, which is equivalent to $18.3 million, but the cost of refueling is between $200,000 and $300,000. The cost of the reused core stage was $9.45 million. According to Shotwell, SpaceX engineers will eventually reduce the overhaul work required for the core phase in March 2017 by a factor of 10. At minimum cadence and above, SpaceX is offering the Falcon 9 for $42.8 million, 30% off its current price. If the company passes 100% of the cost savings onto its customers, the cost could be reduced to $37 million. The company's primary customers are the Department of Defense and Intelligence Agencies, who prioritize rocket reliability over cost. The profit margins involved in the cost of ULA rockets must be overlooked even by other departments such as NASA, due to their monopolies. However, the ULA's starting price is so exorbitant that the United States Air Force USAF, estimates the maximum unit cost of a single rocket launch in fiscal would be US $422 million by 2020. It had won NASA development awards and contracts to help refine its hardware and manufacturing processes. Meanwhile, SpaceX has filed a lawsuit, accusing the USAF of deliberately delaying certification of a rocket for a national security space mission. The USAF finally qualified SpaceX in 2015 and was able to win a second GPS-3 satellite launch contract in 2016 without competition. ULA had commented that restrictions imposed by the US Congress on the Russian-made engine used in the Atlas V made it difficult to bid for the contract. However, according to an recently fired ULA executive, the company abstained from bidding because of the competitive pricing offered by SpaceX. These companies made SpaceX have the third place in the GPS-3 series since then. SpaceX competed for the launch of the satellite and won the bid. If SpaceX can solidify low-cost launches, it could outperform ULA, which has been garnering a ton of national security missions as the state treasury has been financially expropriated. Human history is filled with stories of people traveling to remote corners of the world, driven by the natural quest for discovery. One of his voyages in search of the New World eventually led to the founding of the United States of America. Since then, it has been home to generations of entrepreneurs like Ford and Hughes, who have upended conventional thinking with their inventions and business models. Continuing this tradition means the next generation will take bold risks to reach the ultimate frontier. Elon Musk believes in making humanity multi-planetary for better survival of the species, the quest to settle Mars requires independent, cheap, and frequent access to space. Musk's team had approached the rocket's Russian designers for a preliminary test landing on Mars. Apparently, the team was wronged when they let Musk build his own rocket. 
There are examples of important inventions and business models that define the modern world that were initially criticized as doomed failures. Musk's vision of a reusable launcher that runs counter to the traditional approach of consuming rockets is his one such innovation. With the early collapse of Russia's Buran and the skyrocketing cost of the U.S. space shuttle, reusable rockets are struggling to become the norm. It opposes reusable rockets based on shuttle experience. His argument is that servicing reusable rockets is fundamentally different from operating aircraft because of the different operational environments. By showing it, you change that perception. Undeterred by criticism, SpaceX wanted to prove its technology in a real flight. Whether that business model can be profitable is still a question, albeit a numbers game. But SpaceX's real success lies in getting competing launch service providers to think seriously about adopting reusability and make serious attempts. ULA CEO Tori Bruno has admitted that SpaceX has brought excitement back to the space sector, which has prompted ULA to review its cost structure and supply him with a 36% reduction in the cost of his chain. Airbus admits its efforts to design a reusable system were inspired by SpaceX. Adeline is essentially an idea to solve the Falcon 9's slow performance problem. It has been mentioned SpaceX when discussing reusability and its position in the commercial launch market. I agree that is required. He recognized three levels of reaction to revolutionary ideas. This embrace is not just about the adoption of new technologies and business models, but about the disruption across industries leading to innovations and new inventions that open up more room for business than ever before. Lieutenant Colonel Tommy Schilling, who worked with the USAF on an innovative design to reach space, however, discovered that competition was essential to the deployment of reusable rockets as a new paradigm. Companies that provide such launch services for access to but Blue Origin and Amazon founder Jeff Bezos said the competition shouldn't be cutthroat to determine the future monopoly of the commercial launch business, as other entrepreneurs would benefit, commented that the ecosystem should be created. See how he benefits from these initiatives as he becomes the first adopter. SES has taken the bold step of launching a satellite in his SpaceX first attempt to repurpose the core stage. Already, he is SpaceX's biggest customer, benefiting from low-cost launches. SES expected a 50% reduction in launch costs, but got only 10%. Exact numbers aren't available, especially if the USAF is serious about flying on reusable rockets, but the benefits SpaceX offers are generally noticeable. As I said, it justifies it. It is the ability and determination to take risks to shake the dominant culture to build a better future. Legendary flight director Gene Kranz credits Musk for reigniting in the space industry the spirit that led NASA and brought the Apollo program to life in the 1960s and 1970s. Apollo program astronaut James McDevitt put it more succinctly when he said the difference between NASA then and now was parking at night. Such recognition could help boost SpaceX's morale. Ideal. After all, innovation is the key to maintaining leadership in any organization. One of our competitors, Airbus, understands this pattern and is open to ideas and looking to bring in innovation from outside the company. Launch service providers around the world have followed the same pattern of wasting launch vehicles. SpaceX's proposal to make the rocket reusable was deemed ridiculous based on previous experience with reusable systems. Russia couldn't back out of its plans, but the United States couldn't achieve the flight speeds needed to make the space shuttle cheaper. But governments and commercial rocket operators are turning to reusability to survive the price war posed by SpaceX. SpaceX, on the other hand, has survived a lot of adversity and has established himself in a position to force rival companies to adopt his ideas. Various experiments are currently underway around the world, aimed at recovering entire rocket stages or critical components inside. An analysis of ULA, Ariane Space, India and China programs shows this trend. SpaceX has featured prominently in discussions about the future of these programs, even as Elon Musk earned worldwide acclaim for his determination to challenge the status quo. The turmoil it wrought could make the 2020s the decade of reusable launch systems that provide low-cost access to space. It is helping create a space-based economy 
that will transform business on Earth by moving manufacturing into space and harnessing resources mined by celestial bodies. For Musk, this isn't just about creating a new economy, it's about making Mars habitable and helping humanity itself survive. It is therefore important to assess the value and success of his SpaceX from the broader perspective of these future goals and visions, rather than being limited to mere finances. Enjoy watching. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button for the continuation of such content.